Hey guys, welcome back to Just Carve Rob. What we're doing is we're going to split apart those arms. So we're going to end up with four arms, guys. We're ending up with a four-armed alien from the planet Occupied. And uh, that planet can be found in the galaxy of Calamari. That's right. Octopus jokes, people. Octopus jokes. So, uh... We're using, right now we're using a, almost a needle point carbide aluminum cutting burr to get everything separated out. And we're going to work this, we're going to work the body and get it kind of rounded in and sorry about the lighting. Um, I talked to uh, Evil Evil Rick. He's got a YouTube channel. Great guy. You need to go check him out. Evil, Evil Rick. And it's all in, all together. Don't split it. It's Evil, Evil Rick. No separation than the evils or the Rick. And check out his channel. He's a funny guy. <clears throat> okay, so we're rounding the body over and we're working it down. And we're using this... Uh, pointy carbide burr. Not exactly great for shaping because it's so skinny at the end it just wants to dig right in there. So after we get our arms all separated out we're going to change over to uh, I believe it is our saber tooth extreme burr to get the rough the rest of it down. Yeah, this, this guy's been fun. Um, if you watch the other videos, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with him. So I decided that I was going to uh, turn him into an alien. A four-armed alien. I thought it'd be funny. I talked to Jordy over there at Carbon Fusion last night. And he goes, oh, sure. I was going to do an alien monster. I'm like, okay, Jordy. We'll see what Jordy comes up with. He's got a... A pretty wild imagination all on his own. So we're just rounding things over and getting things shaped up and you know how it goes. You start working on something and the creativity just starts a flowing and then you don't know what you're going to wind up with until you're halfway through your video. Okay, so we have changed over to our saber tooth. Uh, taper burr, flame burr, flame burr. That's what we're using. Um, and with this, we're just got we're just ripping off material here to get them all shaped and rounded and all that stuff. And then we'll switch over to our knives to get all the. The only bad part about these uh, extreme bits. Now on bigger uh, creations, sculptures, whatever, what have you, art. It's not too bad, but on these little guys, the uh, the cut marks that are left behind are deep. So if you're doing a little guy, uh, try to stay away from your final dimension. Figure in that you're going to have to take off about a 32nd of an inch more to get rid of those uh, cut lines from the extreme bits. I mean, if you look at an extreme bit, it's pretty pointy, right? So if you're burying that thing into your work, however big your points are is how deep your cut marks are going to be. So make sure you leave yourself enough room to get them back out of there without uh, getting yourself too thin in areas. I'm usually pretty careful about that. And I know I want these arms. These arms are going to be really skinny anyway. So I, I believe I have enough room there to uh, get away with getting rid of the cut marks. So now we're basically shaping the belly and there's them lights, man. I can see it now. Now I know what everybody's complaining about. It really bounces off that light colored wood like a lighthouse beacon, right? So there's nothing I can do about the, this series because I already recorded it, but as we get into getting into the detail of this guy, I'll make sure that uh, Rick suggested putting a cl 
cloth or something over my lights to dim the lights. Because right now, I'll tell you, I got 100 watt LED lights, two of them shining down. Oh, there he is. See, we've got that belly shaped out, uh, shining down on this guy. So it's pretty bright. I didn't think the new camera has a, uh, like a, a thing that goes over the lens. It kind of flares out. It's supposed to block a lot of that light, but I must have had the light just at the right angle where it was still shooting back into the lens of the camera. And I am so sorry, guys. But you know how it is when you get carving. I'm carving, I'm filming, I'm editing. I'm a one-man band here. That's how I lost all my film on the other one. I got going carving and I didn't pay attention that the, the thing wasn't recording. So yeah, these the flame burr is like my go-to burr. Whether it's a big quarter inch flame burr or a real tiny flame burr like a diamond flame burr or whatever or even the uh, aluminum cutting flame burrs I love flame burrs you got so much versatility if you go all the way to the end you can use it you know to do them really fine cuts and if you need to take off a lot more material you see how I'm using the middle of the uh, flame burr to get rid of all that uh, extra bulk material on there I love flame burrs and I love extreme bits. It would have taken me forever to do this with a with a diamond burr, but uh, and it would have been a little tricky to get in some of them spots with a knife too, guys. Knives don't like going around corners, but usually if you can fit a Dremel bit in there, I can get a knife in there. Um. The only problem I got with using a Dremel on everything is because it is a rotary tool. Is to get if you want a real sharp cut. Now I'm not saying you can't use a needle burr, one that comes right down to a little needle point. But for me, it's just easier to use a knife to get that really, really sharp, crisp edge that I like. On some things. Most things that I do are, and you'll see, are mostly rounded. It's all rounding over. All this, you know, there's not too many flat features on a person or an animal. So, you know, it's all personal preference. Everything is, in my opinion, and Jory's always saying that it's in my opinion. It's in his opinion. Well, this is in my opinion. This, there is no hard and fast uh, book that you get this information from. It's just every wood carver, and you could go to somebody else's channel, and they'll have a whole different theory and uh, opinions on how to do things. This is just my way of doing it, okay? And if it works for me and it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, um, every carver has their own style. So remember that. Um, Jordy has his own style. I have my own style. Rick has his own style. Doug Linker has his own style. Uh, Gene Messer, great carver. One of the first YouTube carvers for small figures. Uh, I think he's been at it like since YouTube came out in the, in the early 90s. Great carver. Uh, visit his channel. You got, you know, just don't go to me. Just don't go to Jordy. Just don't go to, to Rich over there carving... Uh, Choose your own path. Uh, look at everybody's style. And then you'll create your own style from taking all our styles. Uh, and you'll create your own, which is so cool. I can't tell you. I To this day, I still watch all these other carvers. Uh, everybody's got tricks, you know. And if they're willing to share them with you, take advantage of it. That's what I do. Uh, sure, and I know Jordy watches a lot of YouTube videos. So, and if you ask him, he'll tell you, watch them YouTube videos. He loves them. I love them. Without them, I doubt I'd be uh, carving an alien with four arms. 
I'd probably still just be working on walking sticks and gun stocks and things like that. Yeah, okay, see, we're, now we're working the backside of the alien. Yeah, remember to, remember to keep flipping them around and looking at them, guys. There he is, there's the front side. There's the side view. There, see, he's got a butt now. There's his arm. 